Hello, and welcome to another Digital Differential Equations lecture video for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, I would like to finish going through Chapter 3.6, Basis and Dimension of a Vector Space, and look at a few more examples. So let's turn to page 40 of our guided lecture notes and start there. Here we are asked to find a basis out of this set of vectors. So recall when it says basis, we are looking for a linearly independent spanning set. And I'd also like to be able to have you be able to identify that we're talking about the vector space R3, because each of our vectors have three components. And to help us with this, I've already given us the RREF of this matrix. So what I'm asking you to be able to do is look at the RREF of this matrix, use it to be able to identify which of the vectors given will be the linearly independent spanning set that we need. And here what you want to notice at there is that there are three pivots. These three pivots identify these vectors as your linearly independent vectors. And since there are three of them in R3, which is a three-dimensional space, they will form our basis. So here, our basis. Make sure you give me the original vectors here. One, two, one. Negative one, negative one, one. And four, four, six. Now, I can go a little extra here, give you a little more information. So let's call this the extra info. Here, you should also be able to use your RREF matrix to determine how the other vectors are not linearly independent. For example, this third vector in the RREF says if you do three of the first vector, and two of the second vector, then that's how you can create the third vector, one, four, five, to show that it is a linear combination of the others. Similarly, the fourth column in our REF says if you do one of the first vector, and minus two of the second vector, then that's how you can create the fourth vector in your original set. And the same would go for the fifth column, but I'm gonna stop there. Okay, let's look at one more example. Consider this set of vectors. Are they linearly independent? What is a basis for R2 out of them? So here again, you wanna know that we're talking about the set of vectors in R2, because we're talking about vectors that have two components. And this is a two-dimensional space. But we are given five vectors here. there is no way these vectors can be linearly independent. So they are not linearly independent. If 
five vectors in a two-dimensional space must contain some dependent vectors. Now, to find out what they are, we would have to put this matrix in R, R, E, F. But right now, they're just asking, are they independent? No, not possible. However, can we get a basis out of these vectors? And R2 is a little easier to work with because there's only two components. And what I'll generally do is grab your first vector, 1, 0. By itself, it's linearly independent because there's only one. Grab your second vector and ask yourself, is it a multiple of the first one? And I'm going to say no. Therefore, these two vectors are linearly independent and can form a basis for R2. You didn't have to pick just those two, though. You could have also picked the first vector and the third one. Again, by visual inspection, 3, 4 is not a multiple of 1, 0. So it's linearly independent. Or you could have picked the last two, 5, 6, and 7, 8. These vectors are not multiples of each other and thus can form a basis for R2. So there's lots of different choices you could have pulled out of this set of vectors. Now let's try a different let's try a different vector space now. Let's talk about M23. Remember M23 is the space of all 2 by 3 matrices. So we're only talking about two by three matrices. Or to put it another way, we could say M23 is equal to the set of things that look like A, B, C, D, E, F, such that A, B, dot, 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 F, all of our letters are elements of the real numbers. We're talking about matrices that look like this. We want to identify what is the basis. Now remember, there could be a lots of different bases, but they all have to have the same as the same number of elements as the dimension. But what is the dimension? So here's one way to approach it. I would like to first grab the simplest basis that I can. And I'm going to say, what if it looked like this? I'm thinking this could be a basis, and it could it would be the easiest basis. What I mean by that is if you wanted to create some matrix, for example, the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, well, then you could do this by taking one of the first matrix, two of the second matrix, three of the third, 
four of the fourth, five of the fifth, sixth of the sixth one, and did this linear combination. That would give you this matrix. However, if I were to remove one of these matrices, for example, if I were to remove this one, then there's no way I'd be able to get this six in this position. This tells me that no smaller set of matrices will work. And so the dimension of M to three has to be six. And this could be a basis for it. Okay. Let's try another one. How about uh, the vector space P2? Write a basis. So for P2, you'll remember we're talking about polynomials of degree two or less. So things that look like this. Where your coefficients A, B, and C are always elements of the real numbers. Some examples would be maybe 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, or negative x squared plus 3, or 2x minus 1. And what I want to do is find what is a basis for this and what is the dimension of P2. Now there could be more than one basis, but the easy basis would be the set x squared, x, and 1. So if you wanted to create this first polynomial, you would have to do two of the first basis element, minus three of the second, four of the third. That'll give you your first one. If you wanted to get your second polynomial, you'd have to do negative one of the first, zero of the second, three of the third. If you wanted to do your third polynomial, you could do zero of the first, two of the second, negative one of the third. This tells us that the dimension of P2 has to be three. It's one more than the degree of your polynomial. So what would be a basis then and the dimension of P3? So P3, the set of polynomials of degree three or less. Where all of our coefficients are real numbers. The easiest basis would have to be x cubed, x squared, x, and 1. And because there are four of them, we could say the dimension of P3 would have to be 4. Okay, if this is making sense, let me make this problem a little more interesting. Can this set be a basis for P2? And what you want to identify here is that in this set, you're only given two vectors. But remember, P2 is a three-dimensional space. 
we're given two vectors in a three-dimensional space. There are not enough vectors to span. This cannot be a basis for P2. We are only given two vectors in a three-dimensional space. So the vectors can't span. Hence, not a basis. And that's it, we're done. Let's try another one. Can this set be a basis for P2? So here you notice you are given three vectors this time. So maybe we should say maybe we are at least given three vectors. They still have to be linearly independent though. So let's see if they're linearly independent. And I'd like to use the definition of linearly independent here. The only way these are linearly independent is if the ve if the vectors let me write it type it out. is if the only solution to the following equation is the trivial one. So let's write out our equation. We want to look at a times the first one plus b times the second vector plus c times the third vector equaling zero. And here for these in independent, a, b, and c must equal zero. I guess that's my question. We're asking, are these, do these have to all equal zero? So to determine if the only solution is the trivial one, I'm going to rewrite our equation by distributing our coefficients into the parentheses. To write this as a t squared plus a b t squared minus b 2 c t plus 5 c maybe then we could collect similar terms for example the a t squared and the b t squared both have a t squared so let's factor or group those together and factor out the t squared. Uh, grab any terms that have a t in them. 
and there's only this one that has a T. So plus 2C times T. And then grab any constant terms. It looks like there's three of those. And we want to know if the only solution to this equation is the trivial one where all a, b, and c are equal to zero. So now we're looking at a polynomial. And you want to remember that a polynomial is only equal to zero if all of the coefficients are zero. So rewriting this as a system, this only equals zero is if a plus b somehow equals zero. Now they don't, they both don't have to be zero. There could be two and negative two, but then the coefficient of t squared would be zero. The 2c has to be zero. And then the a minus b plus 5c somehow has to equal zero. Notice that this is a system of linear equations in three variables. I'm going to rewrite this as a matrix equation. 1, 1, 0. I'm going to go by rows. 0, 0, 2. 1, negative 1, 5. Times a vector of variables, A, B, C. Equals the 0 vector. We're asking, is the only solution to the trivial one? That can be answered by looking at the RREF of the matrix. So let's grab your calculator and let's enter in our matrix. So I hit second matrix. Let's edit that first three by three. And make sure you didn't make any typos entering your matrix in. And I'm going to ask it for the RREF of the matrix. So go back to your home screen and go second matrix. We'll do some math this time. Remember RREF is at the bottom. So I'm going to hit up arrow to get to the bottom quickly and grab the RREF of our matrix A. So here we get an RREF that looks like 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice that this tells us that we have three pivots. and no free variables. This tells us that the vectors are linearly independent and that the only solution well, let me put one minute here in here. The vectors are linearly independent. It tells us the matrix A inverse exists and that the only solution is the trivial solution. where all those a, b's, and c's are zero.
So to tie up this problem, to finish it up, we asked, uh, could this be basis for P2? Yes. This is a basis. We have three linearly independent vectors. in a three-dimensional space. And that's it. Let's try another example. Can this set be a basis for P2. So again, here you should be thinking, maybe there are at least three vectors given. The question is, is are they linearly independent? And I'd like it to leave it for you to determine if they're linearly independent or not. So if you could, please pause the video for a moment. See if you can duplicate the process that we did in our last example and determine if these vectors are linearly independent. I will see you in a moment. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm gonna again start by looking at the equation a times 2t squared minus t minus 5 plus b times t squared minus 1 plus c times t plus 3 equals 0. And again, we're asking, is the only solution to this equation the trivial one, which would imply independence? Again, our approach would be to distribute the a the B and the C into these parentheses. And then maybe grabbing similar terms and regrouping so maybe grab the ones that have a t squared. And when you regroup these, we'll factor out the common factor of t squared to have 2a plus b times t squared. Maybe grab the ones that have a t in them. Let's regroup these and factor out the common factor of t. And then let's also grab our constant terms, which would be the negative 5a, the b, and 3c. And we want to identify we have a polynomial, and the only way a polynomial is equal to zero is if it, each of the coefficients equals zero, which tells us either, well, tells us 2a plus b has to equal zero, negative a plus c has to equal zero, and negative a minus b plus 3c has to equal zero. We'll rewrite our system of equations as a matrix equation. Again, I want to determine, is the only solution to this the trivial one? Or 
for this coefficient matrix A, are there free variables in here? Are there infinite solutions? So let's look at the R, R, E, F of A, which you should have gotten if I go down the columns, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 0. Notice that our matrix only has two pivots and one free variable. This free variable says that there are actually infinite solutions to this equation. And it tells me that these vectors are not linearly independent. It says to create the third vector, we could do negative one of the first and two of the second. Let's verify that. If we did negative one of the first vector, which is 2t squared minus t minus 5 plus 2 of the second vector, t squared minus 1. And let's distribute the minus 1 and the 2. and combine similar terms. I think these t squared terms will cancel. And if we combine similar terms, I think we get t plus 3, which is our third vector. So the vectors are not linearly independent. And if the vectors are not linearly independent, the vectors can't be a basis. And that's it. I'm going to stop the video here. I have one more example or one more idea to present to you, but I'm going to do that in another video so that I can break these videos into smaller chunks. I hope this is helpful. And in the next video, we'll look at function spaces.